Hey everybody, I recently purchased this diesel heater off Amazon and it showed up today. So I want to walk you guys through the first time setup and four different mods that make it easier to use. So let's go ahead and get started. Now once you unbox your diesel heater, the first thing that I recommend doing is inspecting the inside to make sure the fuel lines aren't kinked and all the nuts and bolts are tight. So you're going to take a Phillips screwdriver, you're going to remove all these screws and also the two screws in the top handle. Once the screws are removed, it's nice to put them in a bag so you don't lose those. And now the actual side panels are loose and we can just pull it right off and expose the inside of the diesel heater. Now I've rotated the diesel heater around so now you can see the fuel tank. We're going to carefully set this aside and then you can see the internal fuel lines. So here's a closer look at the fuel lines. You can see there aren't any kinks in the line and the barbs are secure. Now some people recommend putting an inline fuel filter. I think we're going to pass on that for now. Now looking at the other side, you have your main power inputs, so your positive and negative. You want to make sure both these nuts are tight so they don't come loose. And also you have an inline fuse. So if your unit doesn't turn on in the future, there's a 20 amp fuse in here that you might want to check. Now I've turned the diesel heater onto its side and now we're looking at the bottom of the unit where you have the intake and the exhaust. Now if you follow this green fuel line, it goes in next to the air intake. Keep in mind this brings in cooler, fresh air so the fuel line will not melt. This side is the exhaust. Now the kit comes with a bunch of different clamps so you can easily attach these and there is an access hole for a screwdriver up on the top. Now there are two different mods that I did to this unit. The first mod was me purchasing this 90 degree stainless steel exhaust elbow so I can easily route the exhaust out the side. Now there are a couple reasons why I went with this 90 degree elbow for the exhaust. The first reason is the stock exhaust pipe is really really rigid and it's quite hard to get it at that tight of an angle. So using this elbow is much easier. The second reason is that I want this to be a somewhat portable unit. I didn't want this huge exhaust pipe hanging off that I had to take off every time. So by having this elbow here, I can leave this attached up here, not deal with both these connections. So then I can simply slide on the exhaust pipe when I use it and take it off when I put it away. The second mod is how I routed this intake hose. So with the exhaust pipe connected, the exhaust will be going out that way. And then with the air intake, I routed it underneath here and you can see it fits perfectly inside that gap. I didn't have to make any cuts through here. The only modification was on the front where I drilled a hole with a spade bit and then routed it through. So I did use an inch and an eighth spade bit. Now that got it pretty close. I then had to use an X-Acto knife to kind of trim up the final pieces, but this is just really secure in there and it fits really well. Now once I had this routed through, I cut off the excess using the X-Acto knife. And if you look at the actual air intake filter that kind of keeps bugs out, this has a threaded end on it. This right here kind of has twists in it. So you can actually just screw this on and it stays on there pretty good. So whenever I'm using it, I can leave the filter on there without clamping it. And then whenever I'm done, I just unscrew it and take the filter off. Now that we've checked the fuel lines inside and the bolts for tightness, and we've installed the exhaust and the intake hoses, let's go ahead and put on the outside case and I'll show you the two final mods that I did. So a few minutes later, we have the whole unit put back together. Let's break down the third mod. So right here you have your power input. You have your main positive and your main negative for the diesel heater. And the unit did come with this default wiring setup, but I didn't want this huge long pigtail connected to this and I didn't want to have to undo these every single time. So I have this nice 12 gauge silicone wire I've attached on this Anderson power pole connection so I can easily connect and disconnect my load whenever I want. Now the fourth and final mod is super easy and it has to do with the fuel cap. The default fuel cap has a hole right here that allows it to vent. However, I saw complaints that whenever people were transporting this, fuel would actually spill through this hole. So what I did is I actually took out this center piece, I filled it with hot glue and then stuck this back in there. You can see that there's just a little bit of glue coming through that hole. So now whenever I'm using the diesel heater, I'll just lightly put the cap on. You can see it's got enough room to breathe. And then whenever I'm transporting it, I'll screw this all the way down and it'll be liquid tight. So after about 45 minutes, those mods are done and we're ready for the first time startup. Now the whole purpose of doing those mods is so that I can basically use this in a plug and play setup. All I have to do is screw on the air intake, plug in the exhaust to the 90 degree elbow, put fuel in and connect up a battery and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and start that process. So let's go ahead and put on the air intake. Then we'll go ahead and twist in the exhaust. Now I have a clamp on there so it is fairly tight and it shouldn't leak. Then we need to fill up a little bit of diesel fuel in here. Now this is winterized diesel. It's available from the gas pump in my area. I'm just going to put a little in here. I'm not going to fill it up too much since it's the first time. There we 
we go. Now the final step is hooking up a 12 volt power source, which is this battery. So we'll go ahead and connect that up. Now we're gonna go ahead and prime the pump. So what you do is you push these two buttons at the same time, and then you push this top button, and now we can hear the pump priming. So it's been priming for a minute here. I see the fuel going into the burn chamber. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the priming process. So with the priming process completed, I'm gonna go ahead and push and hold the power button and see what happens. Okay, so I hear it starting up. So this is what everything looks like as it's starting up. Now, I just barely missed just a little bit of white smoke coming out. Nothing too bad. And it is starting up. You can hear the fans. So we'll see how that goes. So it's been about five minutes of it running on the lowest setting. The air coming out feels really good. It's about 40 degrees today, so I actually like this heat blowing on me. Now you wanna burn off all the oils that are on the exhaust pipe and the muffler, so I'm just gonna let this run for a couple hours. Um, I'll come in and check on it every now and then. Maybe in a little bit, I'll check the actual temperature coming out with my thermal camera. The diesel leader has been running for about an hour now. The air coming out feels really good. The pump isn't very loud at all, the ticking noise and the fan and everything on level one sound really good. So I have my thermal camera here. Let me go ahead and just shoot this in here. I'm measuring right around 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now over here on the exhaust pipe, measuring uh, around 220 all the way down to 150, 145 down at the exhaust pipe. Now to get a better idea of the actual temperature of the air coming out, I'm gonna put this hose on and then I'll measure the temperature coming out of here. Now, after letting this air hose warm up for about five minutes, I'm seeing around 167 degrees coming out of the air hose. Now, I wanted to measure how loud it was on the lowest setting from about two feet away. You can see with my sound meter, it's around 51 to 52 decibels. So now I wanna go ahead and turn this up to the highest level, which is level 10. So we'll go ahead and let it kick up and we'll test to see how hot it is. So this turned up to level 10, it's actually much louder. The fans are really moving air. So a lot more heat coming out of this thing. Let's go ahead and measure it. I'm showing right around 394 degrees uh, coming off the heat sink. While running on high, you can see we're actually getting some discoloration on the exhaust pipe now. And looking at the temperature, I'm showing right around 394 degrees up there and around 340 degrees on the muffler. Now, while it's running on high, I've put this hose on here so we can kind of get an estimate of what the air temperature is. Ooh, man, that's hot. Don't want to keep my hand here. 231 degrees. Woo. Now, testing the loudness of the heater on high settings from two feet away, it's around 61, almost 62 decibels. So it is a bit louder when you have it on high. Now, I've gone ahead and put this on the lowest setting just so it can cool off before I turn it off. Now, when you turn one of these off, you press and hold the power button on the display, and then it goes through a whole shutdown process. It's normal for it to keep running after you turn it off. Do not disconnect the power. Uh, it does not go through the proper shutdown process in that way, and you can get soot and build up on the inside of the heat exchanger. Now, keep in mind, this was just supposed to be a super basic video about setting up the diesel heater for the first time and doing those simple mods. If you wanna see other videos of me testing this, let me know. I can talk about different power options. I can talk about run times, how long it runs on a single tank of fuel. I can also go through estimated power usage numbers or even me testing this out in the wild. So let me know if you guys are interested in that type of content. Now, I'll go ahead and recommend a few other videos if you wanna check those out. I'll also have the link to this down in the video description. This is a super affordable option on Amazon. Amazon. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please smash the thumbs up button and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.